up guys this your boy barca boy 103 today we're gonna be reacting to some barcelona news i felt like i feel like i haven't done this in forever it's kind of my trademark of course on the channel i have not done it in a long time you know what that means there's a lot of news to discuss i have updates on everything if you look at how long this video is that tells you enough everything we got updates signings exits players future and all the news around barcelona you know your ffps with Aleman return and get a case we've got everything in this video you can of course go in the timestamp see what you want to see if you want to watch the whole video cool if you want to see some parts from the updates absolutely fine as well but before we get into this video please 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 make sure you drop a like so i get the 200 likes in this video for me please it would be very 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 much appreciated a lot of hard work dedication went into this video and also make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it let's start off with all of the transfer news over the past two weeks or so let's get right into it firstly Luis Diaz apparently according to Fernando Polo Fer Martinez from Deportivo Deco is a big fan of the player keep your eyes on him being a potential left wing option of course pending us returning to the 1-1 rule which we do have an update later on in the video for me personally I don't mind Luis Diaz I think he's a really good player really good pure winger as well he kind of reminds me a bit of Rafinha in the sense of his decisiveness and inconsistency in the final third although his numbers you know scoring wise are probably better than Rafinha he does miss a lot of chances so i'd be wary of that again injury issues a lot this past season as well so keep in mind if that's you know a possibility when it comes to pricing and stuff like that but for now it's still quite clear that nico williams is the favorite sport and mark have been talking non-stop about barcelona being very interested still with hansi flick arriving in nico williams and just a few weeks ago barcelona were speaking with la liga to ask about the margin that is needed for the signing of Nico Williams. So Barcelona making slow steps, slow progression. Again, Relivo reporting that Bayern Munich are interested, but I'm not too worried about that. If, you know, a Spanish club, I think is his main destination for Nico Williams being in his native country. So if we're showing that strong interest, I think he will make the move. I think honestly, Nico Williams, he's probably looking at a move to Barcelona. And I think if he doesn't, I think he honestly would stay at Athletic Club for another year at least to really develop his game. I think maybe it, if I don't think Atletico Madrid are interested, I don't think Real Madrid, of course, are interested. But if they were, maybe they could tempt him. But it's just Barcelona really looking for him. So I don't really see him moving outside of Spain um, unless maybe a lot of money is thrown at him. But again, we'll wait and see. Barcelona is still very much interested in him in regards to the left wing position. The interest is cooling a little bit, though, for Danny Olmo. And deadlines are coming up for Danny Olmo. Keep in mind, his release clause of 60 million euros is only active until July the 15th. So about a month and a half remaining. Um, when Deportivo are saying that Barcelona now face competition as now Bayern Munich, Liverpool and Manchester United and even Manchester City are showing interest in him and despite his performances for Barcelona the club's financial constraint will require them to sell players first to fund this acquisition again Nico Williams cheaper and better I think Danny Elmo like I've been saying a lot on the channel I'll say it again he's someone that we could probably sign in the future when he has one year left in his deal or maybe even a free agent that's how I kind of see the arrival of Danny Elmo of course if we have money we sell players maybe a big offer comes in for x y and z and we have the money to splash on Danny Elmo sure but definitely not a priority in my opinion now saying on the topic of the left wing we're still waiting to hear on the future of course of Joel Felix again quite clear he wants to stay I think Laporte is a little bit in favor and Jorge Mendes as well looking like Barcelona either gonna try and do another low move or else they're gonna absolutely chuck it in the bin uh, sport also came out saying that Jorge Mendes is now starting to look at other teams as well in case the option of Barcelona isn't available there are some reports that Mary Man United want to do a swap and do Atletico Madrid with Mason Greenwood Joao Felix and then that'd be a great move for Joao Felix going to United of course uh, the Greenwood they um I thought Madrid get a player they want they just give uh you know uh Man United a player they want as well I think that could be a good move pending the developments of course with the Barcelona situation again we'll wait and see what Flick's verdict is on the both Joao's in fact not just Joao Felix now, saying in the forward department, we have been linked with Artem Dovbik, of course, the top scorer for La Liga, the one who won the Pichichi for Girona. If Barcelona have money, if we need a striker, uh, Matteo Marito is reporting that Barcelona have shown interest. Look, I mean, for a player like him for that price, I need two seasons minimum to really judge him. Anyone can have an offseason. Anyone can have an offseason. So I would not get anywhere near close to spending $40 million on Dovbik. If he does it again in La Liga, fair enough. He's just fine his price tag, but for me, I would stay well clear. Again, if Girona finished top four next season, 
I'll give everyone who likes this video $10. Because the reality is, it's not going to happen. They had a great season. It's a blip. Next season, they'll be challenging for Europe. They could be challenging for top four. Would not be surprised by that. But I think they will finish in the, those Europa League, uh, Europa, you know, conference positions. I, it, it, again, if they prove me wrong, they prove me wrong. But, you know, I'm never wrong, usually. So, we'll wait and see how things turn out. But, again, I would stay clear of this. But, again, Barcelona showing some interest, of course, pending. Lewandowski big sale or Victor Roque loan stuff like that where we potentially need a striker but again splashing 40 million on him but we need a left winger full back to the pivot I see it very very unlikely now in regards to the midfield position there have been some reports about Florian versus Musiala right after Hansi Flick was appointed <sighs> am I surprised listen to this report Verts and Musiala are two impossible dreams for Flick he's he they fit perfectly in the manager's idea but right now those signings are impossible I mean, sky is blue, grass is green. I just, I'm mentioning this simply for clickbait. So if you got clickbaited, get mad. All right, now we're into the pivot, of course, which is going to be one of the number one priorities for Barcelona this summer. The name of Joshua Kimmich, of course, is picking a lot of momentum up recently. It already picked up momentum when Xavi was the manager, but now with Flick coming in, it's even more so. Mateo Mirjo came out playing the one player Barcelona like and will continue to be interested in with Hansi Flick in charge of Joshua Kimmich. They know each other and Flick likes him. There's no negotiations right now as things currently stand. Fran Corras came out saying that Hansi Flick actually wants Barcelona to sign Joshua Kimmich from Bayern Munich this summer. Again, depending on the price, apparently he's going to be asking for huge wages which I hopefully will not be the case if it's Barcelona and Hansi Flick there of course trying to negotiate with him I think Kimmich is a fantastic player he ain't a pivot bruv I will keep saying that unless Flick wants to play him out right back and have this inverted formation or he wants to play a double pivot fine whatever but single pivot natural pivot one pivot big fat hell no for me but there's also another problem with usual Kimmich as well and that is the side of his Attitude. Having Miguel came out saying that Deco made a report in which states that Joshua Kimmich is a problematic player who creates tension in the dressing room. And this is 100% correct. In my last video, I told you guys I watched the Amazon Amazon Prime documentary for German national team during the World Cup and also by Munich after this next football season. You can see in those videos, in those documentaries, clear as day how much of a problem Kimmich is behind the scenes. He even said it himself that 11 Kimmiches on the pitch would just fight each other and would not win any game whatsoever. So he knows that. That's his personality. He can't change that. But fantastic point there from Deco. Behind the scenes, he'll get into fights very quickly. Of course, it's all passion, all for the love of winning and you know stuff like that. But he gets into fights a lot. He argues with players. He argues with coaches. He speaks his mind. You know, stuff like that where you can cause serious, serious problems behind the scenes. So keep that in mind with the links as well and with the price tag being thrown around around 50, 60 million euros. But again, we'll wait and see how things develop over the next week or so, especially pre-Euros, which is of course taking place in Germany. But we have been linked with two other low-key options, you could say, for the pivot position. One of them, well, both of them actually, coming from Valencia and both of them are Spanish. First one up is Javi Guerra. Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Deco has surveyed about Gabi Guerra and assured that Barcelona can undertake his possible signing. There has been at least one meeting between him and his entourage and Valencia value him at around 20 million euros and would be open for Barcelona to include some players in the operation. Depending on Hansi Flick's demands, Barcelona would once again maintain contacts with his entourage. So again, you're getting a good promising player for maybe around 20 million or less, throwing in some players hopefully that we don't need, you know, your uh, Longlets, your Alex Valle, whatever the case may be. So that could be an option. Again, like I've mentioned before, we need someone top in the pivot. We're not, we're not, we don't have time. It's so important of a position where we need someone with either, you know, medium experience that can go high or someone who's high experience that can come in now and do a job for two years. Starting off low like this and getting him, letting him grow, giving him time, I'd rather just give that to Kaisa, uh, to uh, Kaisedo, uh, to Mark Casado because what's the point of going out there and spending money when you have someone in the academy who fits probably the same profile, just needs a bit more nourishment, understands the system and style of Barcelona. He's been in La Masia, knows the training, knows everything, so no integration needed with him. So that's where I see the, you know, whole in this same thing goes for his counterpart in Pepe Lu. Fernando Polo Rosalero from Deportivo came out saying that in the search for defensive midfielder Pepe Lu, 25 of Valencia has caught Barcelona's attention they have very good reports on him so keep in mind on both the pivot Spanish Valencia midfielders in Javi Guerra and Pepe Lu because Barcelona are showing some interest in them now one pivot who we thought we already signed but now is looking a bit questionable as things stands is of course Guedo Rodriguez. As things currently stand, Barcelona's pre-agreement that they have, of course, reached with Guido Rodriguez 
expires today, which means what? It means that Gordon Rodriguez can choose to go join another club and sign for another team, or he can sit and wait and chill for Barcelona. Well, Barcelona have told Gordon Rodriguez that right now we're quite not quite 100% sure if we want to sign you or not. We definitely like you as a player, just waiting now for the green light from Hansi Flick. It's now up to Gordon Rodriguez if he wants to wait for Barcelona or go out there and guarantee another move. That's going to be up to him. And again, the agreement is still there, but it's not, you know, on paper. It's expired because by now Barcelona should have already officially announced him, not registered him, but confirmed the signing. But now that pre again pre contract agreement is expired, so we'll wait and see how uh, you know what Deco, what, not Deco, but what Hansi Flick decides on with other guys. But now his signing is, you could say, potentially a little bit in doubt. We'll wait and see how things turn out in that regard. Apparently, uh, you know, Flick maybe not want him because he wants to play a double pivot, and with other is not really suited for a double pivot. I mean, he can play. He's played for Argentina and Betis a lot, but. I don't know, it comes down to Flick and we'll see what he decides. Again, I think Casado's future, Roberto as well, will all be kind of interlinked and have uh, complications on each other. Now, one kind of luxury signing that we have to talk about, of course, he's on the thumbnail. It is Xavi Simons. Again, a lot of reports about him joining Barcelona on loan. It's been confirmed now by basically everyone. You have Roger Toledo here. You have uh, Roger Toledo again. You have uh, more Roger Toledo. You have Graham Bailey from the UK. You also have Fabrizio Romano confirming it as well. Even La Parisia and Sati Ona from Mercado. All confirmed. Xavi Simons is leaving PSG on loan this summer. He will 100% not be in the PSG team next season. The only reason why PSG are not selling him, because if they do sell him this summer, they owe like 50 to 60% of the transfer fee, the majority of the transfer fee to PSV. So that's why they're going to loan him one more time. And then next summer, they're going to sell him. And again, if he's going on loan this summer. He does have an implication. He does have a say on where he can go. Again, will this change with Hansi Flick coming in? That's going to be a question that, that has not been reported about. This is an easy signing for me. Oh my god, you get him in on loan next summer. PG you want to sell him as well. Maybe chuck in a little buy option this summer as well. If he does well, again, inverted left winger, can play as a false nine, can play as an interior, can play in the eight, can play in the ten. It's a brilliant world-class signing. On loan as well. You cannot go wrong. This would be stupid in my opinion for Barcelona to pass up on. Again, bringing a player back home as well. So many of his friends play for Barcelona. Now you're going to have that chemistry uh, with all the wanting success for the club absolutely no brainer in my opinion we'll have to wait and see how things do turn out but again Xavi Simone's 100% is leaving PSG and also what's 100% as well he wants to decide his future before the Euros begins which is in about two weeks so again we'll wait and see how things turn out in that regards but hopefully the route to Barcelona is still possible again all these reports for Xavi Simone's came out pre Hansi Flick signing uh, so we'll wait and see how things turn out afterwards now not only in the first team but we also have some updates on some b team signings as well that make picking up a lot of hype we have this player right here in alan uh opendo he's having a lot of hype about him he's a striker big strong player he's had a few trials uh with barcelona he's highly 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 rated a lot of top clubs like even psg and chelsea were showing strong interest for him and let's say barcelona have taken the driver's seat in regards to his signing so we'll wait and see how things turn out in that regard nothing confirmed with him quite yet but one thing that's inconfirmed is with another top signing now this player is a jerthy uh, uh moku i believe is how you say his uh, name he's a center back 16 years of age and he's belgium my he is beyond rated i mean every single top club in the world wants him and deco has been making big moves to sign him they had a meeting at the city of sportiva john gabber with his uh, with his father and his entourage as well and deco is making some great moves to close his signing as soon as possible and his idea of course is to have him do preseason with Barcelona atlantic he'll probably be a you know a mcback mccall replacement he's very very highly rated i've seen some clips of him madre mia we'll wait and see how things turn out in that regards, but keep your eyes on him for next season. Of course, if we do end up signing him, he's super, super, super good. Great on the ball, strong player as well. Sensational. The fact that Deco is meeting with his entourage and his father says enough about his quality. Now, finally, we do have an update on a potential goalkeeper signing. Now, this report came out like two hours after Fabrizio Romano said, here we go for Hansi Flick signing for Barcelona. It's coming in from Sky Germany. They came out saying that Barcelona's interested in German goalkeeper Mo uh, Bachas. Uh, who is currently on loan at Dutch side uh, from uh, from uh, Werder Bremen? He was scouted several times this season by Barcelona. I've seen some clips of him. My God, is he sensational! But again, German goalkeeper. Uh, we already have a German goalkeeper as well. German coach coming in. German coaching staff. I mean, I don't know if I'm buying it, but his for his level, 
his performances are ridiculous. Great on the ball as well. So again, we'll wait and see how things turn out. I think definitely there's more links with uh, Moku and also uh, Openda, Opendo. Uh, these two players are very, very highly rated by Barcelona. They're really trying to go for them. With uh, the goalkeeper, nothing too concrete as they currently stand. We've not heard anything since this initial report, but for Opendo and uh, Moku, it's just non it's constant, constant 24-7 updates on their sign. So keep your eyes on those two mainly, and we'll wait and see if we go for this German goalkeeper or not. I think in Akepenia's future, we'll definitely have implications on this potential signing. Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to be leaving Barcelona. Over the past two weeks ago, same format as the transfer news. Let's get crack a First up, Barcelona have made a sale. Not really made a sale, but have made a huge amount of money on a sale. And that is on Chad Riyad. Remember back in January, Chad Riyad is coming back. Kundi and Arujo getting sold. The club are going to trust him. He's off to Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Very, very good move for him pers uh, personally. So what's happened here? Betis have bought uh, Chad Riyad. From Barcelona for 3 million euros, I think 3.5 million euros actually, following his loan move. Betis had then gone and sold him for around 15 million euros. Whether that includes the variables or not, I'm not quite too sure. I've seen a lot of, you know, 12 million plus 2, 12 plus 3, 14 being fixed. Whatever the case may be, the main thing is, is that Betis have officially sold Chadriyad to Crystal Palace. Which means... That Barcelona, of course, we talked about this a lot over the, you know, the January uh, window when we were talking about him also in the summer. Barcelona have 50% of any future sale, which means we got the 3.5 million euros from Betis signing him from his loan and also 50% of this transfer, which means altogether Barcelona have earned around 9 million euros for Chad Riyad. Sensational. So what we've done is that we've gotten rid of a player that we didn't want. Of course, yeah, I think we had no room for him. I still rate Chad Riyad very highly. Uh, and we've let, basically let Betis do all the work for us. So in the end, we get almost, you know, double digits for Chad Riyad. I think that's a great operation overall for Barcelona. And credit where it's due. I think it was Mateo Aleman who did sell him before uh, Deco came in last summer. Brilliant, brilliant move. So I wish Chad Riyad all the best at Crystal Palace. And 9 million euros coming to Barcelona. Now, in regards to the current first team... Of course, Alonso is leaving. Free transfer confirmed. Apparently, he's not going to Atletico Madrid. To be honest, couldn't care less. Alonso is leaving. Where he ends up does not bother me whatsoever. But apparently, now that the move to Atletico Madrid is now actually happening, it was all fake news to begin with. Couldn't care less. One exit that I do care about, of course, is the exit of Oya Romeu. Now, Mundo Portivo came out saying that after spending a short time at Barcelona, Oya Romeu might return to Girona this summer. Romeu is a very important goal for Girona because he's past performances with the club and his also personal attributes. Romeo is interested in going back to Girona as his lack of uh, regular you know, playing time at Barcelona, making a possible move easier. And the financial consideration should be reasonable. Barcelona would ask roughly for around the same amount they paid for him last year. So, Barcelona, we bought him for around $3 million. Girona can buy him back for 3 million. Gabriel Sanz also came out saying that at Barcelona, they do not consider Romeo's move to Girona advanced or assured. Everything's open right now, and the player also wants to wait for the future of Hansi Flick and what he decides with Romeo. Now, Romeo did speak uh, while he's on duty for the Catalonia national team. He said that we have to evaluate that in the summer, when you go up, you always want to be on the field, and that is my priority for next season. He wants to play. I said, you know what, Girona, perfect, happy days. Of course, now we can't get Alex Garcia. He's probably going to Bayern Leverkusen. Great move for him personally. I think, again, I would honestly even take less from you from Girona. If they, I would say, you know what, we paid $3.5 million. We'll take a million off as, you know, a loan fee. You give us $2.5 million back, $2 million back. Happy days. So if we can get any money for Romeo, I'll take it. So hopefully the club can, uh, you know, show some strong negotiations for Romeo. Now... That's in return. Apart from other first team players, they've all been you know rumors and question marks. Alonso and Romeo, concrete exits. But we do have some updates on the players returning from loan with their futures, of course, said to be decided. We have four big updates. Firstly, Clement Longley, Gabriel Sanz from Deportivo came out saying that Clement Longley's loan spell at Aston Villa has ended, and the club will now, of course, pursue a permanent transfer. Sky's blue, grass is green, Aston Villa aimed by Longlet. Yet again, third summer in a row where we have to deal with this shite of trying to get rid of him. So, we'll see how things turn out. Uh, hopefully, we can get rid of him on a permanent basis this time. But again, a little alone would not rule it out. There's been some reports from Sport. Oh, Barcelona have a lot of offers for Longlet. Absolute BS. We have zero offers. Loan offers will probably come in for sure, but hopefully we can get rid of him on a permanent transfer. But that's one massive issue for Barcelona. Again, his wages are absolutely fat. And then we got to get rid of them, of course, as soon as possible. 
God, I hate long limbs so much. Not, not the person, but the situation itself. Next loan, uh, coming, of course, play return from the loan. Pablo Torre. There's been reports from Mundo Portivo suggesting that Girona are actually the first option to sign Pablo Torre permanently if he does not return to Barcelona. Torre is in the plans of Girona, but it will depend on how Hansi Flick vies the player. The player himself will be willing to continue under Michel as well with Girona. So we'll wait and see how that operation goes about. Again, we could be looking at a Chadriad operation. We, load, we sell him for, you know... Fairly cheap, but we include a buyback option. We can we include 50% of a future sale. Keep in mind, two summers ago, we invested a lot of money in Palo Torre. I think we spent, what, 20 million on him? Or was it like 10 million plus variables? We spent a good amount of money on Palo Torre. So we had to make sure that we get this operation correct. Again, he has unfortunately no future at Barcelona. I don't think he's a good player, but again, again, the moment for him, I guess, from last season, I think it was a good time. But now, since we had you know all these reassuring, reassuring players and the academy doing so well, in the end, I don't think it's going to work out. So we'll wait and see how his future uh, turns out. Another uh, lone player that's coming back that now is surprisingly on the chopping block, and we'll talk about the reason why later on. That is Alex Valle. There are reports coming in saying that Alex Valle is currently on Levante. was watched live by Everton and Bournemouth several times this season. La Liga club like Getafe, Betis, and Osuna also value him as the club do look to sell him. So it looks like a decision has been made with Alex Valle. His future is outside of Barcelona. Again, we might sell him with a loan. Uh, we might you know, even just loan him out again next season or sell him with a buyback option, present a future sale. Whatever the case may be, but again, his future is not Barcelona's first team next season. He could stay with Barcelona Athletic, but I think that would be a dumb move. I think Barcelona right now, especially with kind of the hype that's around him. And again, he's a good player. Definitely would be looking to cash him out. So that's Long Leg gone, Pablo Torre gone, Alex Valle gone, and also unfortunately looking like Ansu Fati gone. For Bichir Manos come out saying that Ansu Fati remains one of the players who is expected to leave this summer. <sighs> if I'm Ansu, I'm just get on that plane to america that is it if you can get on that plane to america it's in your hands i think for the next month and a half we'll wait and see how things turn out what offers come in Justin pimienta by the way go to sevilla low move for ansu would be brilliant there i think i would don't mind loaning ansu if we if, if hansi flick does not want him i'd rather loan him than sell him because i think that low move sevilla his hometown where he was born where he started his career as well from the age of like 5 to 11 before he made the move to barcelona under Garcia pimienta barcelona former barcelona player former barcelona athletic manager as well i think that's a match made in heaven against these in spain his brighton move has been nothing short of an absolute failure on a lot of money as well so if something has to be decided but again i want Ansu Fati to stay next season i think he could be a good backup option if, again if you have nico williams if Ansu as backup binge wall felix uh and then maybe can you know be open for option for and Torres as well. Again, I'm being very biased. I have a lot of stock invested in Ansu Fati, so we'll wait and see how things turn out in this regard. But again, Barcelona still have it in mind that he will not be part of the first team next season, but we'll wait and see if he can survive uh, to preseason on that uh, flame, and also if Hansi Flick's opinion will have any sort of implication. Let's now discuss the players whose futures at the moment are in a bit of limbo, so they're not guaranteed to leave like we just talked about, and they're not quite guaranteed to stay as well, there is a lot of complications, implications as well that could definitely change the tra trajectory of where their future lies. First up, we're going to talk about Aruho. Rumors about him have been flying all over the place, why he hasn't renewed, all this stuff. But the general consensus has been that apparently Aruho and Xavi had a fallout. Apparently, Xavi had this list of players that he wanted to be sold. And Aruho was not on that list to be sold, but he did make a mark saying that, oh, if an offer comes in for over $100 million, take it and run for Aruho and Aruho took that personally and now he's mentally affected by the pressure I think Alex Pantel came out saying a mental wear and tear has been taken on the toll of Aruho due to constant criticism especially after the PSG game he's happy at the club he has uh, no doubts about the project but it, whether he thinks about leaving or not it would be due to a psychological reason mate you're the effing third captain of this goddamn club. You are a season away from being the first team captain Roberto might go to seconds you know half the fan base already hates him you're like a, two seasons, I would say, three at the max, from being the first team captain. And you're having psychological problems after you've been shite the past season, making individual mistakes in crucial moments in the season. And you want to blame us for criticism? Absolutely do one. I think Aruho is a world-class defender. I would keep him 100%. But this is his mentality, and an offer comes in for $90 million, I am taking it and running but again we'll wait and see how things turn out what's quite clear at the moment in the law rooms that are coming out about this is that hansi flick really likes aruho and he wants to keep aruho by any means necessary so again for aruho himself the manager new manager coming in backs him a lot that'll definitely help in his pursuit of staying all i will say is this with aruho he has to renew if he does not renew i will sell him i don't care if hansi flick wants him he has to renew his contract the same goes for frankie 
de Jong. Fernando Polo from Liberty came out saying that Barcelona sees all of Arujo, Pedri, Gavi, and Frankie de Jong as essential slash untouchable players. The club will not sell them. Barcelona believe Arujo will prioritize staying and be important in Flick's project, and they also think that Frankie de Jong will make a leak in his performances. Of course, the first player that Hansi Flick spoke to as the Barcelona manager was Frankie de Jong. Look, I have, again, no problem with this. Of course, with Pedri and Gavi. Oh, no. All these four players need contract renewals. Pedri expires in 2026. Gavi, 2026. De Jong, 2026. Arujo, 2026. They need renewals. Their futures for me are still... I think with Pedri and Gavi, it's a little bit more clear because the club love them. They're fantastic players. They're Spanish as well. So it's going to be a little bit of bias in there. But these players got to renew their contracts, man. And if offers come in, you know, triple digits... You're raising your eyebrows for sure. I think, again, we'll wait and see how things turn out. The problem is now you're going to have Copa and Euro, so nothing is going to happen in the month of June. You think these four, any of these four players are renewing their contract in the month of June, maybe even ha half of July? You're crazy. And then, of course, after half of July, you're in preseason mode. They're going to be having breaks, of course, during that time since they're going to be out on international duty. But bloody hell, man, we got all these four players need, and I'm not saying that, oh, it would be beneficial. They should need contract renewals. And again, I would not... I personally want to keep all the doors open until they put pen and paper on a brand new deal. And again, we'll wait and see how things turn out in that regard. Now, we have some updates on other players as well that maybe not so key, but again, their futures are important. One of them is Anaki Pena. A few weeks ago, he had a meeting with Barcelona to discuss, you know, his future. And the word came out afterwards that Anaki Pena is still part of Barcelona's plan. His agent met with Deco a few, you know, during the, when they met a few weeks ago. Uh, Barcelona is happy with his performances as the backup goalkeeper that he occupies. But again, if an irrefutable offer comes in that's both good for Anaki Pena and Barcelona, things could change. And this is confirmed by Relivo as well that he wants, that, that you know, all parties are happy to continue barring some sort of miraculous change. Someone comes in and offers 10 plus million for him. So again, Naki Pena probably saying unless something offer comes in. Again, I have no problem with it. Uh, I don't think we really have. We're not really in this. Our squad's not really perfect enough to really focus on a backup goalkeeper. I think Naki Pena did not have. I think he had, a, again, it's on my player ratings video. One of the lowest ratings in the whole entire uh, squad. I didn't rate him at all last season. But again, he came in for that two, three month period. Did not impress. He might get another opportunity. And, and he does not press. So we'll wait and see. I don't think right now we're in a in a place to really be concerned about the backup goalkeeper. We have one. That's all that really matters at this point, in my opinion. Other people see future. Now, now, next up is in the center back department. We have a future update on Inigo Martinez. Gabriel Santos from Deportivo came out saying that Inigo Martinez is still part of Barcelona's plan. Again, this is kind of pre Chavi being sacked. Post Chavi being sacked, we're hearing that Barcelona still want to keep him, but now apparently Hansi Flick will decide between him or Eric Garcia as who will be the fourth slash fifth choice center back for next season. So I think his future is, you know, in limbo, not, con not confirmed state, not confirmed leaving. There is some, you know, question mark. I think, again, him having that left foot definitely gives him a massive, massive advantage. And we'll wait and see how things turn out in regards to him. But again, his future, about a 50-50. Now, the other left-footed center back at Barcelona, not really in the first team, but in the B team, is, of course, Mikal Faye. And his future right now is a bit in question. Joaquin Pereira from Sport came out saying the board advised Xavi to give him more minutes uh, to Mikal Faye in the final season. And that didn't happen. And that is to generate some disappointment with the club's office did so apparently internally the club really rate Mikal Fey highly but again never played for the first team this past season and Chavi never used him uh for reasons that are unknown so again if Inigo does leave you have Mikal Fey as that fifth choice option I think again with Mikal Fey this summer it's simple first team or you sell him you can sell him for 15 million throw in a buyback option throw in a 50% of future sale you can do something very similar to the operation of Chad Riyad as well would not mind that whatsoever but he cannot be a Barca Athletic next season it's going to be a sale or first team. We'll see how things develop over the next few weeks when Flick and Deco start making decisions in regards to the squad. Uh, staying on center of backs, now people are going to talk about people who are going to be 100% staying. First up is Christensen. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that recent good performances from Andreas Christensen have led to Barcelona receiving interest from several major European clubs. However, Tony Juan Martin came out saying that Andreas Christensen has no intentions of leaving Barcelona. He is happy. The players also focus on finishing the season, uh, fixing his physical problems, of course, and, you know, continuing at the club. Keep in mind, Christensen's contract, if I'm not mistaken, also expires in 2026. Of course, not a priority like Arujo, De Jong, Pedri, and Gavi, but this is one to watch out for as well. And again, if an offer comes in, 60 million plus, you have to consider it, especially with him coming in for free and being net profit, net gain, and FFP. I'm not saying I'm going to go push Christian out. I think he's a fantastic player, professional we're looking at him over the past, you know, four months of the season. Mother, mother effort only plays 45 minutes every game. 
One minute he, he's eating, one minute he's out. One minute he plays 45 minutes. One minute he's, you know, stomach flu and sick. Next minute he only plays an hour. Very inconsistent for a top player. So, again, the club right now very happy with him. He's very happy. I have no real complaints. But again, if an offer comes in, things could definitely change in the economic situation that we're currently in. And also, keep in mind as well, Christian is in the position that we have a huge overbooking as well. And I doubt that Flick sees him as a double pivot option uh, in that area as well. So, again, we'll wait and see. But if he stays, I'm cool with it, of course. And, of course, the club do want to keep... Pedri, they have very, Barcelona have been very clear. They will not hear any offers for Pedri according to Relivo. He's the future of the club. Again, he's poster boy. He's on the front of the cap. No, he's on the front of every advertisement alongside Lewandowski. So, of course, that is the case. Speaking on Lewandowski, we got an update on his future. Now, firstly, again, Lua, Lua interview coming out again. He did a bunch of interviews, you know, over the past few weeks, basically saying that he wants to stay at Barcelona. He's very fit. Uh, he sees himself playing at Barcelona for the next two years, he says. So, I mean, uh, whatever. Now, also, in regards to his variables and his contract that we agreed with Bayern Munich, by the way, Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that, according to various reports, Barcelona need to pay about 1.5 million uh, euros to Bayern Munich after Lunas, who scored 25 goals this season. But according to sources familiar to the contract, the bonus would have only been paid if Lunas scored 26 goals in the league and 8 in the Champions League. Therefore, no clause, no bonus has to be paid. So, absolutely love the job, Lee. We save some of the amount of money. We save this money, we get the chance that money. Oh, we're absolutely balling. Now, of course, in regards to Lewandowski's future, he is 1 billion percent staying unless Saudi Arabia offer Barcelona a billion euros. <laughs> Not a billion, but they offer us something good. Flicking him, they glaze each other, they love each other. Poster boy, scores goals. He's got one more year than him. Again, again, I'll say this for the absolute one millionth time. He's got to reduce his wages. I mean, Laporta hired Hansi Flick. I would say 40% of that reason is because he's friends with Fini Zahavi. Get on the phone with Fini Zahavi and tell him, mate, ain't no way we're paying him 300k a week. Jesse. You want to break that up into variables, goals, maybe we sell certain shirts with his name on the back and, you know... Whatever, I don't mind breaking it up per se. That cannot just be his base though. That cannot be, you know, he pisses uh, for a whole week and he gets that guaranteed. That cannot be the case. So hopefully things can, you know, change in that regard. We also have an update on the backup striker. This is the final update we do have in this section. On Victor Roque. Now, Joaquin Pereira, of course, number one source around Brazilian players, around Barcelona as well, around Victor Roque. He's come out saying that Victor Roque's agent have informed Barcelona that they will now comply with whatever the club decides. Oh my God. Oh my god, so when Chavi's here, oh, no, no, we're gonna be, we're gonna sell immediately. And now Chavi's gone, oh, oh boys, don't worry about it, whatever you want. Let's go alone, we'll go alone. You want to sit on the bench, we'll sit on the bench. You want to go, you know, cook you some burgers, we'll cook you some burgers. Absolutely crazy. They will not cause any problems in the coming weeks. Alongside Hansi Flick, they will make a decision. Roque is convinced that he will be in the squad next season and insists that in the case of leaving, he will prefer a permanent transfer instead of a loan. Three European clubs have asked about his situation. So he prefers a permanent transfer, but now he's open. Beyond open to a loan. How convenient is that? Again, get on the plane to America, perform there well, and of course, we will talk. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Boy, oh boy, do we have some big contract renewal updates. The first one is one that is official, that has been official over the past few days. Hector Ford puts pen and paper on a brand new deal at Barcelona. Officially announced to confirm the agreement actually was reached before... Um, I think before the Vallecano match where we won 3-0, or was it the, yes, the last home game of the season. It was agreed before that, but it's officially announced, um, on Monday, I believe, a day before Hansi Flick's, you know, or two days before Hansi Flick was officially announced. Now, again, the details of the contract, very simple. He can only sign, of course, for two years now because he's still under the age of 18, but with his 18, that clause will come in immediately and he will renew himself until 2029. So a very similar structure to the contract renewal of Pau Kubarsi. So right now on paper, it's only a two-year you know, renewal. It makes you know not really that big of a deal. But again, it will be until 2029 that a renewal will kick in once he turns 18. So again, good renewal for Barcelona. And the reason why I'm bringing this up again is because this will have big implications on the future of Alex Valle. Because now with this renewal coming in, Hector Ford, according to reports, will be the coverage and competition for Alejandro Baldi at left back next season. And Alex Valle now will be departing sale, another low, whatever the case may be. So it looks like we're going to have Julian Arujo, Cancelo, for now, maybe slash Kunde, right back. Then at left, maybe Kimmich as well. <laughs> and then at left back, Balde and Hector Ford. Don't mind that. We'll wait and see if Hector Ford gets the first team number or not. That's still in question. But again, fantastic renewal, important renewal, great player. And we'll wait and see how he does next season, especially with, you know, kind of the standards, the standards that we do have for him. Now, 
Now, the biggest renewal update as things currently stand is on the future of the first team captain of the club, Sergio Roberto. Again, Barcelona and Roberto have reached already a full agreement on his renewal in regards to the figures, the numbers, the structure of it, everything like that is agreed. All you gotta do now is sign the thing. But whether or not Barcelona sign it is in question. Fernando Polo from Motivo came out saying that Roberto's contract renewal right now is still complicated. Barcelona do want him to stay, but they have informed him clearly that his registration will not be among the first or second on the priorities list. If he wants to renew, he'll have to race. Uh, he'll have to wait, but then that'll be a big risk and gamble if there's no fair margin. And with these conditions, Barcelona don't rule out uh, just not renewing his contract completely. And now Roberto is keeping an eye on other offers he has on the table. So basically, Barcelona want to register their important players first. Um, first. Uh, first, like, you know, Gavi, Balde, uh, Inigo, Victor Roque. These players are going to be important for Barcelona's first team next season where Roberto's kind of just there for vibes, so to speak. I have no... There's no doubt in my mind that we can renew Roberto. Is that a guarantee right now, 100%? No, but I would definitely say it's above 90% that we can renew Roberto. Again, he's earning absolute peanuts. If we have a problem doing Roberto, then take a gun and shoot me in the mouth because there's no point in having a transfer window uh, this summer. But again, we'll wait and see how things do turn out. I think in the end, he will return unless... I think he will stay unless Flick doesn't really want him. But again, Laporta is a big pusher for him. He wants someone to be... Uh, he wants the captain of the club to know the club, uh, you know, have experience from this from the city as well, knows the culture and style of play. And again, Roberto will be huge, I think, next season as well. He can speak English fluently, so him and Hansi Flick will have good communication. Uh, he's, of course, one of the leaders in the dressing room. So if we keep him cool, if we don't keep him would not bother me per se. But here's one way that can really lead to a Roberto exit, and that is the renewal of Mark Casado. Full agreement reached with Casado three months ago. This looked very unlikely. Now, all of a sudden, new deal agreed until 2027, confirmed by everyone. Mundo Portivo Sport, even Fabrizio Romano, confirmed it as well. But Fernando Polo has come out saying that with the renewal of Mark Casado for three years already on track, at Barcelona, there are voices favoring that Casado in the first team and Roberto out of the first team. More youth and hunger versus more experience and captaincy. Very, very interesting. I would say, especially under a new coach, this is a bit of a risk, which again, I'm here for. Again, we do it cool. If we don't do it, it wouldn't really bother me per se. A lot of hype internally about Casado, by the way. So we'll wait and see how he does in preseason. I'm very excited to see him. But again, full agreement on his renewals. That's, you know, Parco Barca tied down to a long deal. Fermin Lopez, uh, Hector Fort, and now at Casado on that list. And also, you could even say soon add Mark Bernal. Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Barcelona are very close to renewing Mark Bernal's contract. The talks are already very advanced and the final agreement could be reached in the coming days. It will be for three years with the option of another uh, two years. The idea for him is to do preseason under Hansi Flick. Again, very important renewal. One of the best uh, pivots coming up currently in La Masia. Uh, so definitely one to watch again in preseason. Now, the final renewal update that we do have is actually on the manager of the likes of, you know, Casado, Bernal, and that is Rafa, Rafa Marquez. Now, Gabriel Sanz, one of the has come out saying the continuity of Rafa Marquez is more complicated now following Hansi Flick's arrival. His current contract expires in June, and he has other offers on the table. A promotion to the second division does not guarantee that he will continue either. A final decision will not be made yet and will be made in the few weeks after his season ends. So, Juan Laporta would like Mar Marquez to continue, but Flick's arrival blurs the club's confidence in him. Now, Rafa Marquez was asked about this recently, I think after uh, the game against Celta Vigo B for Barca Athletic, and he said, I have a good understanding with the board and I'm not in a rush for my future. So they're going to wait until their season is probably over. Again, right now, Barca Athletic are in playoff mode uh, where they could get promoted to the first team if they win a few games. So we'll wait and see how they how they perform in that regards. Following that, we'll wait and see on the decision of uh, Rafa Marquez. Again, if he doesn't stay, we're going to have to look for a new B team manager. That's going to be another, another headache that we're going to have to worry about. So we'll see how things turn out. But as things currently stand, Marquez's future is a bit in doubt. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is, of course, give you guys the updates around the club, surrounding the club but over the past two weeks or so. We got some big reports. And look at this for a bombshell to start off with. Alex Pantel from Relivo reporting that Juan Laporta is considering the return. Of Mateo Alemán to Barcelona. As people were drooling about this on FT. Bloody hell. Keep in mind, Mateo Alemán is the one who left. Uh, Laporta did not fire him. There was no fallout. He just chose to leave for a different adventure. He went to Aston Villa. Saw that, you know, the Shelby's in Birmingham. is like, I'm not going there anymore. And then they got Monchu, of course. So he's been out of a job since leaving. I think, when did he leave? Was it like October, November time, officially? Or like September, somewhere around then? Mateo Leman is not going to come back unless he has full power. Who has that full power right now? You guessed it. It's your boy Deco. So unless Deco gives up his power and they can share it or something like that, 
I see his return personally, in my opinion, as still complicated. But in mind, the reason why one of the reasons why he left, according to reports, that he didn't have full control. He of course he did his, his job. He performed very well. Everyone was very happy. But he wanted a bit more control. And Laporta said, "No, the full control uh, that you want is right now with Deco, and he has it. So I mean, if you want it, you gotta have to one v one him for the for the title <laughs> in the arena. I don't know, but we'll wait and see. I think this is all just hype, you know. You know this media just create some stories." I don't really see too much into this. So we'll wait and see if other news outlets confirm this, but keep your eyes on Mateo Leman. Maybe coming back this summer. Again, his his expertise in financial fair play is astounding, and hopefully we're going to be a bit healthier in that regard. Now, speaking on the board as well, it looks like Deco does want to recruit someone, and right now, Fernando Navarro is a one really strong option. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Barcelona have contacted Fernando Navarro to be part of the sporting sector. He was Monchu's right-hand man during the prime times of Sevilla, knowing that he was free after leaving Sevilla last April. He was recommended to Deco, who met with him to get to know him a little better and find out more about his uh, situation. He's also a friend of Xavi. In any case, closing an agreement could be difficult. Moreover, Navarro's role as a Sevilla was similar to what Boyan is doing right now at Barcelona. So it really makes no sense to bring him in. But you know, you have Mateo Edeman rumor, Fernando Navarro. So it looks like Barcelona do want to maybe add, want to add, you know, someone else to the sporting sector. We'll wait and see how things turn out. Uh, again, we had that kind of, uh, you know, dynamic duo of Jordi Cruyff and Mateo Edeman who worked really well together. Uh, Jordi Cruyff knew his position. He knew that Mateo Edeman was higher ranked than him. They worked really well together. So maybe Deco's trying to find, trying to find his Jordi Cruyff. Uh, per se. Who has been talking to me? He spoke to Fabrizio Romano about some stuff about Barcelona, but nothing that we didn't already know uh, per se. Now, of course, all this revolves around FFP. We have some big FFP updates. Relivo came out saying that Barcelona's salary limit will rise to 530 million euros next season if they manage to return to the 1 1 rule. I think right now our salary limit is in the high 300s, like 380, low 400s. I mean, 5.30, you can forget, we'll register Roberto, no problem, Gavi, Baldi, Inigo, Victor, Ro no problem. We just gotta get back to the one-man rule, and there are, of course, many ways to doing that. Uh, Relivo also came out saying that sources who have familiar for Barcelona's financial situation confirmed that the club's condition now is notably better than last year. They add that Barcelona have made spectacular cost saving, have structural expenses that are lowering the, them further, a large contract with Nike that's close to being agreed, and the same reconstruction is completed with a huge source of income as well. Again, right now, the situation with FFP, we have a deadline. June the 30th, we need the Nike deal to come in. We need, of course, that sale of Barcelona Vision as well. Eduardo Romeu, the former vice president of economics for Barcelona, who resigned, what was it, three months ago? He was speaking to the media recently. I'll talk about this maybe tomorrow and more in depth in tomorrow's video. But he was saying that, yeah, Barcelona is really healthy now. There should be no problem returning to FFP. Let them work. <sighs> the reason why I'm so upset, go look at my fucking videos, my transfer videos in like March and April. I've been saying that Barcelona are going to do this shit last second again. The deadline is June the 30th, of course, less than a month. We have to sell Barcelona Vision for 50%, get the Nike deal over the line. They're going to do this last second. Oh my, I guarantee you, June 15 hits. Ready? Clip this. June 15 hits. Barcelona, Nike deal's not happening. Barcelona Vision's not happening. We're not working the one one rule. We can't sign anyone. We can't register Roberto. We're going to sell Haruho and De Jong and my left nut to earn money. And then June 28th hits. Official statement from Barcelona. Full agreement reached with Nike to renew the contract. June 29th hits, full agree with the sale of Barca Vision to Elon Musk. And then we're all Gucci. That's what I hate about the one thing that's pissed me off about Laporta's tenure, apart from, of course, the loans of renewal and the treatment of Chavi, they do everything last second, and it's so, so annoying. So, again, I, I've been telling you guys this now for two months. Renewal with Nike, sell of Barca Vision, we will have no problems, no constraints this summer. The blueprint is there. You just have to to execute it. Also, regards to FFP, of course, with Chavi waiving his salary, that will help a lot as well. Chavi's salary was 12 million. He gave up the 12 million, only asked for six, seven million as a compensation fee for his staff and for himself. So Barcelona to save around 8 million euros, especially with Hansi Flick's salary being only 3 million. So we went from, you know, paying Chavi 12 million to Hansi Flick 3. So big, big, big gap. And again, with the current space right now, Gavi, Baldi, Inigo, and Victor Roque, a Korean that registered in La Liga. Keep that in mind as well. Of course, Gabi was unregistered to register Victor Roque. Bali was unregistered as well to register Victor Roque. Victor Roque now is only unregistered because he only was registered for six months. Inigo has, is only registered for a year as well. So it's not like Barcelona unregistered these, uh, you know, have to register these players again. It's not for the whole team, like, you know, your Arujos and your Diongs and your Jose. We don't have to do all that for them. Just these four specifically because they've all been unregistered 
for various different reasons. So again, we'll wait and see. Also, in regards to FFP, we got some TV money coming in. We are expected to receive around 130 million euros for the TV rights. Again, Barcelona have smashed the numbers. Every single week, we were the highest viewed game in La Liga. Apart from the Madrid derby in January, the one game. Every single match day, we were the highest rated, highest watched games. And by a considerable margin as well. Madrid never got close to us. We beat them by like 100,000, 200,000 views. So, rightfully earned that money. Now, of course... Where we play, of course, and the, the earn this money is at the Monge week, unfortunately. But we do have some updates on SPY Barca. More delays. We're now looking at March 2025. So we went from November anniversary, the club's anniversary, and in November, to December the 15th, to February, and now we're hitting March. You know what that means? Another season at the Monge week. Get yourself ready for that. So that's going to be a very painful one. Also, last week, by the way. There was a fight between a lot of the workers at this point of my cabin now that left two people injured. <laughs> what the hell is going on down there? I have no idea, but they're scrapping, they're fighting, they're beefing, and this is why maybe there's delays. I don't know, but hope, I just hope if we can get to the stadium before the round 16 of the Champions League, which I believe is mid-February, we can just get there before then. I'll take that. Imagine the comp now, at least 60,000 for the Champions League. That has to be the priority for the club. Of course, the earlier, the better, but that for me is the cutoff. If we can't get there before then, it's another whole season of the Monge Week, in my opinion, confirmed. Now, of course, that's why Barcelona will hopefully earn us a lot of money. We do have, of course, an update on the Nike deal for FFP. Uh, there have been reports coming in from Deportivo saying that Nike have proposed a 10-year deal with Barcelona for 150 million euros. And again, with the 100 million euros signed on bonus as well, becoming the highest uh, uh, you know, sponsorship deal in the world of football and hopefully this will take place soon so again there is an agreement i don't know what they're waiting for to finalize it and maybe crunch the final numbers i don't know what but this agreement has been reached now for about two or three weeks please just get it over the line again they're gonna get it over the line june 28th june 29th you know watch this clip this i'll i'll bring it back it's gonna be quite obvious so again agreement is there let's just hope they can finalize it as soon as possible now saying on the topic of nike Got some updates on the kit. The away kit will be coming out July the 1st. So again, the home kit will be released around June the 20th. And then the away kit, July the 1st. Third kit, which you can see there on the right-hand side of your screen, which looks pretty crap in my opinion now, especially with these real images. Around the beginning of September, we have some new training tops as well coming in. This is going to be the training top for next season as well. And this will be the training jacket as well. I think for the Champions League maybe specifically, but, you know, we'll wait and see on that. Now some other news that you probably have not seen whatsoever, but I will let you know about it. Now you got a case. You've been found not guilty and been annulled again. I mean, I don't know how many more of these you need. The club even released an official statement saying that Barcelona shows the satisfaction with the meaning of the resolution issued a few days ago by Barcelona's court to extend that it confirms the approach defended by the club and rejects the hypothesis of alleged crime of bribery. We maintain our conviction that through justice, the facts that are the subject of the complaint can be definitely clarified and absolutely innocence of the club can be proven. What else do you need? Barcelona played the referees, my absolute pure R. So there's an update for you. I'm not worried about the Nigeria case anymore. If I'm being honest, if Madrid media can bring it up next season when we're successful, when we're winning, you know, trophies, they'll bring it up. You just show them this and tell them to absolutely swivel on it. Some more updates. Of course, there's no end of season uh, friendly game in case you haven't already clocked that already. It was canceled due to scheduling issues with the uh, South Korean team. I forget what they were called in Barcelona. You know, we couldn't get it through. And plus, Chavi got sacked anyway, so it would have been very, very weird uh, in the end. Maybe that could have played some rule. Imagine we had a friendly game with Chavi, would Joe uh, Laporte have sacked Chavi? Not quite too sure. Now, in regards to another friendly game, which of course starts off the season, the Juan Gamper, we're looking at August 11th. So, which is, I think, the weekend before the start of La Liga. So, hopefully by August 11th, that should be the benchmark. Have all your signs there. Let them be presented at the Monge Week. Have a party. Opponents, we are not hearing uh, anything strong at the moment. So, again, we'll wait and see how things turn out. But August the 11th, all signings have to be in. Take that iconic picture with the Juan Gabriel Trophy. Go out there and give the fans some hype for the start of the season. Now, of course, in regards to preseason as well, there have been reports coming out from Ian San Antonio saying that Mark Bernal, Paul Prim, and Mark Casado are expected to be joining preseason. But this, of course, was during Chavis. Whether that will change or not for now remains to be seen. I think Mark Bernal and Casado are locked in. Paul Prim, I think, is where the uh, question mark kind of comes in. Now, who, uh, who has that decision, of course? It's Hansi Flick. You're probably wondering, Hansi Flick, where the bloody hell are you? You signed for Barcelona a few days ago. We haven't heard or seen you since. According to Sport, after signing his contract, Hansi Flick has now gone to Ibiza, where he'll spend 10 days of vacation with his family. I read this. I'm like, you've been jobless for a year. More than a year. What the hell do you need a vacation for? I'd say great cracking, but again, I mean, 
that's just me. You might be saying I'm a flick hater. I, I'm not. I wish him nothing but the best. I will shoot my brother in the in the face for him to be success, successful. But again, just my what, what I think. He says he's already drawn up the main lines of the sporting plan with Deco, and they will con continue to maintain, of course, fluid contact during this vacation. But Flick is better to return to Barcelona at the end of June, around two weeks before the start of preseason. So at least there will be some sort of integration process for him where he can get settled in the city and stuff like that. But again, going on vacation after signing for Barcelona, I mean, eh, it doesn't look... Too good in my opinion, but we'll see how things turn out in that regards. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past two weeks or so. We covered absolutely everything. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please, please make sure you drop a like on it. The video took a lot of time and effort for me to make. I really appreciate some love. Of course, leave me your thoughts down in the comments down below on maybe the main topics. Not everything we discussed, we discussed everything, but some of the main topics. What I really want to know your thoughts on is the situation of De Jong and Arujo. Do you see them staying at Barcelona? What are your thoughts on Hansi Flick seeing them as important players for the Barcelona project? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. <laughs>